Howdy folks, today we're going to talk about the 7 Hertz Timeless. Uh, this set's got a little bit of hype. So this is a 14.9 millimeter uh, planner driver, uh, metal shell, probably aluminum. Um, you know, decent build quality. A couple folks have had the, the shells pop open on them, which is of course no fun. Um, I don't have any problems fitting them. That's what the tips look like. They're not tremendously thick, but these are uh, Comply T600 uh, small tips, and these work super good for me. Um, I'm just going to kind of go over all of the points of this like at first, because I know people don't really want to hear me rattle on for minutes and minutes. Um, so I'll go over the main points that I think about these headphones, and I'll quickly go over my spreadsheet and whether I recommend them, and off we go. All right, so uh, as far as build quality, pretty good. Uh, I don't mind it at all. They fit my ears well. They're fully vented, uh, vents in the front, vents on the somewhere else, the uh, back somewhere, uh, front actually, so I guess that's the back vent. But in any case, um, these are as if you're, uh, you can hear right through them. The isolation is absolutely not there. Um, they sound very similar to an open back. Uh, so just to let folks know that, um, probably influences the tonality, I'm guessing. Um, right off, these have to have major power. This is an X-Duo uh, 05 Plus, and uh, it, you have to have a, a ton of power. I tried these with uh, the Rad Zone ES100, uh, my LG phone, and they do not do the trick at all. The bass does not come up and actually gets a little bit distorted, so no good on that. Uh, what else matters? The cable is quite nice. Uh, silver coated copper cable. I like the cable a lot and uh, similar to something you get on, I don't know, the Cerberus for $200, $400. These are uh, $220, sorry, um, $220. So uh, let's just go over some major points with these real quick. Um, so as far as the tuning goes, these are near my ideal tuning um, with a couple little minor flaws. Um, as far as that goes, I'll pull up the graph here in a minute, but uh, the transient attack on these is going to be or somewhere between probably a balanced armature and a dynamic driver, uh, closer to balanced arm armature in, in terms of the sharpness, uh, just to let folks know, but um, but actually more forgiving. I uh, just wanted to say that. So pretty nice. I enjoy that. I guess that's the planner specialness. Um, these take, like I said, massive amounts of power. Don't even bother with mobile unless you have like uh, X-Duo. Um, phones aren't going to work. I, I don't know, like for dongles, uh, the 9038D, which I have, E1DA, works just fine with them, but that's not. I wouldn't consider that device a mobile device. It takes too much power. So in any case, oh, uh, MMCX, by the way. Um, yeah. Um, what else? Um, bass EQ. I've been playing with a little bass switch here. Also bass EQ just in my uh, power amp player. And they actually take bass EQ like a champ. It's really good. Um, however, the drivers do bottom out faster than like a really super good dynamic driver. Just thought I'd mention that. But you can EQ them and they uh, respond well. Uh, and you don't need to. They actually have plenty of bass uh, stock. Um, so if these had one special metric, I would say that uh, they can extract a lot more detail than your average $200 set, uh, much more along the lines of a top-of-the-line $1,000 or plus set, um, but in a slightly less refined way. Um, they are, in fact, a very bright set, uh, but right on the line in terms of what I consider to be uh, like just no-go or interesting. Um, so they are an intense set to listen to. They have lots of treble. Um, if a track doesn't actually have, let's say it's an older rock and roll, uh, uh, track, then these will actually come across very politely and nice. If it's an electronic track, I, I tried some nine inch nails. Um, some of those electronic instruments were just like, whoa, boy, whoa, boy, uh, not distorted, but, uh, just a little too much for my ears personally. Um, what else? Um, in terms of the, the treble detail, um, I do think that they've got a, like a hair of sibilance, but it's actually, it seems like it's so high up in the treble range that it's not nearly as fatiguing as some certain sets can be when uh, they are sibilant in the lower treble, say 6 to 7K. That will absolutely put me off. These are just right up in the range where it's entertaining, um, but it can be inter intense. Um, cool. Um, in terms of the, the overall tuning, I would call them uh, near... Neutral with bass boost and uh, quite a lot of treble. But as far as neutral for me, 
Neutral for me is going to be a lot darker than Trin's, uh, Crin's uh, neutral graph, just to let folks know. Um, so I think why these have so much hype is uh, ac probably mostly because they have an extremely top of the line styled tuning with as much treble resolution and detail as you might uh, expect out of a very expensive set, uh, but slightly unrefined. Uh, so I think that's probably why they have so much. And also for a planner driver, these have incredible bass slam. Um, as far as that goes, the driver can reach approximately 28 hertz with, that's as far as I tried it, with um, actually a lot of energy and more than most, if not all, dynamic driver sets. Um, you can't pump it up quite as high in terms of just going nuts with bass head as a dynamic driver, but I was actually shocked. Uh, how good the bass is on these, and uh, it's really, really good. I like it a lot, like surprising, very surprising to me entirely. Um, uh, so some of the bad points are, uh, in terms of the mids, I think, I'm not sure how they, you know, tuned this, but this uh, damper in here, it seems to have a, a it, it over dampens the mids. If I listen between this and some of my better top of the line sets, uh, the, this, the mids come across as a less lively and less open and a little more clinical. Um, so it is what it is, but uh, it's not horrible. It's just uh, not my favorite in terms of that. Um, as far as volume scaling goes, these are uh, pretty decent, but they do have such a good amount of treble that you can't get too crazy with it. But uh, they scale uh, decently, I guess you could say. Um, and as far as that, you know, treble levels go, I can listen to these for about 20, 30 minutes, depending on my library. And that's going to be about enough. They become fatiguing. All right, cool. So we got all over all that stuff. Uh, let me just quickly pull up the graph. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, for some freaking reason, this isn't actually working. Um, but in any case... Uh, <laughs> you can go look up the graph on Crin's site. There's nothing in particular that I wanted to talk about other than I'll just throw it out there. Um, there's like a peak in the treble, like it's probably around 8K, and it's just way too much, way, way, way too much. And then there's no roll off like after 8K. It doesn't seem like very much to me. It just goes uh, right along the Crin neutral line. And uh, depending on the track, they're extremely bright for me. Um, and But it's in a musical way, but, but still too much, too much. Um, all right. So uh, we'll just pop over to the spreadsheet here. All right, uh, let's see, timeless, I'll pop it on top here. All right, so exceptional factor, 7.5. Now, um, I might have rated them higher, but but unfortunately, the treble is just too high. Um, I'm not sure exactly, like I think maybe 8K, um, but also they don't have any kind of notch really like I would like around 10K. In terms of the 3D, it's not nearly as bad as I would have expected uh, for how much trouble they have. In fact, it's really good. And in fact, for how much trouble they have, the 3D is probably one of the best I've ever heard. So, well, that's a lot to say. All right, seven and a half, meaning I would listen to them, but it's gonna be few and far between. And I wouldn't take them as my only set. Uh, accurate sound, um, unfortunately, no. The treble is really not going to be accurate as compared to mixes. Certain mixes, the percussion, um, like bells, the little twinkles and things like that are just going to pop out. And in no way were those supposed to do that in the mix. Uh, in terms of wideness, they have a good top of the line overt wideness thing going on, probably because of the push treble. Um, I think that's probably, like I said, you know, somewhat of the uh, magic and the hype behind these. In terms of 3D, uh, eight and a half. Um, and again, I, this is actually kind of special for how much treble they have. This is really hard for some sets to pull off. Maybe there's a notch, I don't know. That I'm not gonna go in deep with my theory here, but uh, just in terms of how these sound, I, I like the, the 3D factor quite a bit, but it can be ruined if a track has like plenty of treble. We'll just say that. Uh, so three and a half out of 10. Moving on, imaging, eight and a half out of 10. Um, actually really good, uh, you know, average good to high uh, average good um, slightly under the best of the best sets with like a billion balanced armatures whatever but uh, is what it is um, I like it a lot eight and a half uh, volume scaling um, unfortunately like okay some tracks are actually better than others but for the most part uh, I'll run into like anything electronic is generally going to be too much for me on this uh, after 20 30 minutes so volume scaling when I give them a seven and a half out of ten uh, bass is phenomenal and surprisingly good for what this is. 
uh, maybe just the size of the driver, a 14.9 millimeter planner driver, but uh, fantastic. The base is Bravo, and you absolutely have to have power behind your de uh, device to get this level of base and uh, texture out of uh, the Timeless. Moving on, mid 7.5. They are slightly analytical, slightly thin for my tastes, and slightly over dampened, which just causes the sound to be slightly less uh, open than it could have been otherwise. Moving on, 8 uh, out of 10 in treble. Um, yeah, it's. I, I think uh, if it had been less, uh, then I would have liked it more. And um, But in terms of the resolution, it comes across as extraordinarily twinkly and all those type of things. So like, wow, if you're into a twinkle set, this will do it. It'll just be don't push the volume levels too high. So 8 uh, treble. Nine in resolution, pressure buildup none. They're absolutely vented, isolating. <laughs> nope, and binaural uh, bad. Um, depending on like I tried a uh, a mixed live session binaural and it sounded freaking horrible. I tried the like venerable haircut on or barbershop on YouTube, sounded better, but also very fake. And um, also, I was thinking about a, a couple tracks that I have are vinyl rips, and you, know, you can hear the crackles in the vinyl. And on this set, they just jump out like fly out like you don't want them to. So you know that's that high treble. Um, in any case, super interesting set, uh, two hundred twenty dollars. Do I recommend them? For my taste, no, I don't. If somebody wants a sparkly set and they like um, are interested in listening to a really well-tuned planer uh, set, then um, I would say go for it. The price isn't ridiculous. Whoops, I have this wrong here. But overall, I would probably pick something like the Tanch Gym HANA 2.0, Oxygen. Uh, I could probably think of something else, um, but uh, they're just too hot in the treble, a little too spicy, actually quite spicy. Right on, folks. Um, this has been a super interesting set uh, to listen to, and um, don't plan on using these mobile. Um, probably not, unless you have big pockets with big hefty gear in them. And uh, yeah, I know folks I, I talk to, they're like, well, yeah, you can get bass out of them and stuff with like a normal phone. Yes, you can, but they scale incredibly well with power, so don't fool yourself. Right on, folks. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you on the next one.